Loops come in handy on many occasions. Now you'll use a for loop to display content on the page. You'll create a loop that adds 10 div elements to a web page with numbers inside them. In other words, use a for loop to repeat the same action, and that is adding a div to the page 10 times. The divs are already installed with the CSS to display as a rectangle with white background colors. To code along with me, first download the course folder from the link in the description below and open it with your favorite code editor. Here I'm using Visual Studio Code. From the course folder, open the exercise folder called JavaScript Loops. And then open the index.html file using Google Chrome. In the index.html file, remember to link loophtml.js file. In loophtml.js file, there's already a variable named main that points to the main element in the index.html file. I'll start by declaring a new variable that's going to hold a string containing the HTML markups that I want to display on the page. I'll name it HTML string and set its initial value to an empty string. I'm using the variable name HTML string because it reflects the content of the variable, a string that holds HTML div tags. And I'm using the let keyword because the loop is going to update and add a string of HTML markups to the current value of the variable each time it runs. And the HTML markups will be simple. Each div will look similar to this. An opening and a closing div tag. To make it more interesting, I'll also display the number of the counter each time we go through the loop. So each div will display a different number. Now I'll write the for loop structure. First, between the parentheses, I'll create or initialize the counter variable. I'll name it i and set its value to 0. Remember, this variable declaration is evaluated only once at the very beginning, before the condition is even tested, and before the loop begins. Next, I'll add the condition i is less than 10. As long as the value stored in i is less than 10, the loop will run. Again, the condition gets evaluated before each loop iteration. Now I need to make sure that the loop ends at some point. I can do that by updating the value of i each time through the loop. I'll use the increment operator to add 1 to the current value of i each time the loop runs. In other words, after the code in this code block runs. Now I'll add the code to run within the loop. Each time through the loop, I want to add a set of div tags to the string assigned to the HTML string variable. We can do that with the addition assignment operator. I'll type HTML string addition assignment operator. I'll assign a template literal so that I can insert the value of the i variable into the string output. In other words, the number of times the loop runs. Between the div tags, I'll write dollar sign curly braces and i. As soon as the value of i is no longer less than 10, the loop ends and the program can display the entire contents of the HTML string variable on the page. Finally, I have selected the main element and assigned it to the variable main. So I'll set the HTML string to display inside main element like this. Main dot inner HTML and assign it HTML string. And I also need to delete this test div tags value from HTML string. I'll save the change. Refresh the page. Notice how the browser displays 10 divs with the numbers from 0 to 9. To display the numbers from 1 to 10, I can just initialize the counter variable i with 1 and update the condition to i is less than or equal to 10. I'll save the change. Refresh the page. Now the loop starts counting from 1. Once the value in i is no longer less than or equal to 10, the loop ends and the numbers from 1 to 10 display on the page. Now, if you don't want to update your initialization and condition, another option is add 1 to the value of i variable here like this. 
I'll save the chains. Refresh the page. The results are the same, but I'll set it back to how I previously had it. To make the program display more divs, like 1000, I can just update the condition to i is less than or equal to 1000. I'll save the chains. Refresh the page. Notice how the browser displays 1000 divs with the numbers from 1 to 1000. And what if you want the loop to count by a higher number, like 10? Well, to make that happen, we can just initialize the counter variable to 10. Then increment it by 10 at the end of each loop iteration like this. I'll save the change. Refresh the page. And the result is 100 divs, starting with number 10 and counts to 1000. Good. Another way you might write this for loop is by placing the main.innerHTML statement inside the loop like this. I'll save the change. Refresh the page. Notice how this produces the same results in the browser. But with this approach, the browser has to do extra work by replacing the contents inside the main element each time the loop runs with more and more div tags. This happens so fast you'll only see the final value. In fact, if you log the value of the HTML string variable inside the loop, I'll save the change, refresh the page, open the console, here in the console, you can clearly see how the loop builds the string from one div tag to two, to three, all the way up to 100 div tags. You might also add an if statement inside the loop that, for example, checks if i strictly equals 100, then sets the inner HTML of main with the final string. But the best practice in this case is to build the entire string in an HTML string variable first and then let inner HTML update the page. By keeping this statement outside of the loop, I can clearly see that when the loop ends, the rest of the program continues by updating the content inside the main element. It also makes the browser do less jobs, at least 100 times less in this case, because I'm not asking the browser to replace the main element's HTML 100 times. I'm only asking one time at the final end of the for loop. All right, so now we have learned how to write and work with three different types of JavaScript loops, the while, do while, and for loop. Hopefully you are starting to see how useful they are and how quick and easy they make executing the same code 10, 20, or even thousand times.